Hello everyone, it's Brianna Ray from BriIY here to bring you another video. Today I'm coming to you with a point of stress. It is currently Tuesday uh, and I intended to have this video go up on Sunday. I've been sick for the last couple of weeks. You can still kind of hear it in my voice, I think. But unfortunately for me, uh, that meant I was taking all of my free time to heal and none of my free time to film, which has unfortunately left me in a place where I am only able to film now, five days before my Halloween costume video is supposed to be up. And I didn't make any plans. So I kind of thought about it this morning and I threw together some super quick, kind of a last minute costume idea that you can definitely throw together this week if you want it in time for Halloween. My fiance is a big fan of Marvel. I don't want to say I'm a giant fan, but I've definitely seen them all now as a courtesy of him. And as a result, I thought after watching Loki recently that doing a sort of Loki costume or a Loki variant costume would be a super easy way to make Halloween happen this year, especially if you're on a time crunch. The beauty of the Loki variant costume is you can literally be anything as long as you have the horns and you're wearing green. So I decided to throw together a super quick headpiece DIY um, and I'm going to use a method which I've never done on my channel which is actually using paper mache. I was just going to use a masking tape method but as it would appear I'm out of masking tape. I don't know where it went. I know we have some in this house but it has seemed to completely disappear. Uh, so with all that said I am going to show you the template I made, show you where to access the template on your own and in case you need to super go fast yourself uh, and we're just gonna get started for this template I was specifically inspired to do something that was close to Sylvie's uh, headpiece hers is definitely a lot smaller and definitely easier to do especially with a simple 8x10 or if you have any chipboard or cardboard laying around this is a super kind of low maintenance way to make this happen so essentially what I did is I kind of did a vague measurement of what the front of my forehead kind of looked like and I built this kind of oblong shape I did fold it in half to make sure it was even on both sides and I just kind of sketched out a rough shape of what I thought it was going to look like but basically I'm making an armature out of chipboard which I'm then going to overlay with paper mache to create a more seamless look. I digitized everything and in the end this is what my SVG cut file looks like. So you can see I have the different horn pieces, the decorative pieces, and all the pieces cut out of my headpiece as well. That way everything can be assembled after I get it cut out. I am doing this with my Cricut to keep things quick and easy, but of course there is the option to hand cut or um, you know with scissors or to hand slice with an X-Acto knife this shape out of chipboard as well. For this I'm using just one piece of chipboard, that is all you'll need, and the distance from um, temple to temple on my head is seven inches so that is what I have sized the template to be obviously you can go up to I mean as long as the sheet of paper that you're using is so in this case 11 inches um, so if you've got an 11 inch head this should work for you <laughs> all right now that we are all out I'm going to peel my chipboard off of my mat. Looking on the back, we can see it definitely didn't cut all the way through, so I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and finish cutting through all of these pieces. Having the cuts there already, however, is going to make the final slicing much, much, much easier because the knife is going to naturally kind of fit into those grooves, as you can see, um, and it's super, it's not impossible, but it is unlikely that you are going to cut outside of the lines when they're already kind of there for you. All right, now we have all of our pieces here. So this is our headpiece. The front can lay pretty flat, but these end pieces are kind of eventually going to wrap around the sides of our head. So I'm gonna bend them just a touch so that it can get used to kind of wrapping around a little bit. First pieces that we're going to actually grab here are going to be our sort of front decorative pieces. These are gonna go right up here and they're gonna be bent a little bit to kind of form that three dimensional shape I was talking about earlier. Uh, so I'm actually just going to take, you can do this with masking tape, I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue just on the inside edge of one of these pieces, super lightly. Definitely don't want it to be goopy or super obnoxious looking. We are just going to do this and then kind of squish them together so that they have that three-dimensional shape. It is not super uh, acute of an angle, if you will. It's quite wide, um, but just enough to kind of give it that little little something. From here, we are gonna take our littler front pieces and these are going to go not touching, but on the inside, again, just to add a little bit of dimension. 
Next on here, we are going to center our sort of decorative front piece right along this flat edge here. They should, the points on each of those should kind of line up and it should kind of hang off the top a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do to make sure that this doesn't get too off center is I'm actually going to place the glue on the back of the decorative bit and I'm going to kind of place it from here. I do have to worry about this camera kind of getting in my way, so I'm gonna try my best to keep it center on the first shot because hot glue can be finicky. Next, we have the horns. So Sylvie's crown headpiece, whatever, uh, does not have one of the horns. It's kind of chopped off, uh, but I am going to be making a design with two horns because, um, I feel like it, I don't know, I want both horns. What can I say? I'm a person who appreciates symmetry. As you can see here, we have one that piece that is curved and one that is straight. You're going to want to bend uh, kind of along the way it is going to bend uh, once it's kind of interlocked. So it'll look a little something like this. Uh, and then we are going to take some scissors and we are going to cut up this one about halfway and this piece is going to get cut from the center point down. I just ended up doing it with the uh, exacto knife because it was easier. So again, got this kind of bent. Now I'm going to kind of separate them just a little bit and I believe the long, the straight one is a little bit longer and I'm just gonna line these up as best as I can. When I wrap this in the paper mache, it's gonna form the round horn. To keep things together for now, I am gonna take some hot glue and kind of run it along the sides here just to kind of keep everything in place. I will also cut the end that is a little bit too long off of this piece so that it matches. Our last step now is to attach the horns. You can see I've chopped them off so that they're even on both sides and we are gonna just make a nice X and have the horns go up and out. I think they're kind of off on an angle a little bit. Um, so I will be kind of, instead of having them going straight up, I will be kind of turning them slightly uh, and just gonna hot glue those on and we will have our completed armature. And voila, in about a half hour, we have a completed Loki helmet armature. Let's mix one part flour with one part water and trim up some newspaper and start wrapping these horns for my paper mache element. Since I'm only doing these little tiny baby horns, I'm just gonna do a quarter cup of flour and a quarter cup of water. I think that might even be too much, honestly. Um, but, you know, I wanna make sure that I can actually submerge these newspaper pieces. So I am just going to mix, 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 mix. So I'm just gonna grab a sheet of this newspaper cut it up into relatively thin strip. Then we're gonna dunk it and start wrapping. I'm just gonna kind of dunk these in here uh, and get them nice and pasty like that. And of course I've already made a mess. Uh, you're going to strip any extra glue kind of off the edges just by peeling down a little bit. Then take your armature. I'm going to start, oh, I have too much glue. It's a little too drippy, so I'm going to make sure to kind of get all that excess off. Scrape my fingers on the bowl a little bit. Eh. And I'm going to start at the bottom and just kind of start wrapping loosely so that it doesn't... Ah, I got the glue on the rest of the armature. So that it doesn't sort of take the form of the chipboard. We want it to be a little bit more round. Alrighty, realistically speaking, I only used like maybe three or I would say like five strips of the newspaper. Right now, I'm just kind of cleaning up some of the extra glue that I managed to get a little bit everywhere. This is gonna be painted eventually, so I'm not super worried about it now. And I am feeling good about this project. It is time to put it up and let it dry overnight. That way I can paint it, hopefully tomorrow, maybe Thursday. We'll see.
As the piece is drying, I did want to kind of throw out some pro tips. After a while, uh, and I know I didn't really spend a lot of time doing the paper mache element, but I did find that it was more productive to actually get my fingers wet with the paper mache glue and then strip it onto the paper instead of getting the paper wet and then stripping it off. It eventually did start ripping a lot of the pieces and it was just easier to kind of control how damp everything was. My last tip is try to leave the tops exposed a little bit or only cover it very slightly because the paper mache doesn't like to wrap around in that sort of uh, I guess cone shaped pattern it wants to lay uh, in full circles. So leaving this point out is going to give you point to your horns. And here we are back at it again on Wednesday with our dried horns. I do have some kind of, I don't know, wrinkly bits here, but you can tell by the tapping it's hardened pretty well. Um, I do kind of have this little hole here that I might want to fill with hot glue as well, but overall everything looks pretty good. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take this outside and I'm going to spray paint it gold. You know what? Before I go too far, I think things are kind of working out. I showed this to my fiance last night and he said he likes them uh, and he wants to do a couple's costume where he is the actual Loki and I would be Sylvie, which means that uh, he advised that I do cut this horn off. Um, and thankfully it came out crotchety and ugly anyway. So you know what? I think this is just gonna work out. So I'm gonna grab my scissors, chop this off at the top real quick and then fill in with the glue gun on top for funsies. It was definitely a bit of a challenge to cut that off, but it was not horrible. So I am just gonna kind of fill in from the outsides in uh, just on the top edges here. And then I will use the base that I built here to kind of come in further as it dries. All right, I'm sure you're about to hear a lot of screaming from the local children, but I am out here and ready to spray paint the horns. Uh, so let's do it. I very explicitly tried not to paint the back uh, because um, I don't want to get gold spray paint on my head the night of Halloween. Um, but overall, I think this looks pretty good. It's definitely not as vibrant metallic as I might like. I actually might go over it with some of that gold glitter dust that I have and see if that maybe makes it shine a little bit more. But this also does kind of give it more of that aged antique sort of brass look, which isn't so bad. Well, it turns out I hated it. Um, I ended up just going over it with some metallic acrylic paint. Ooh, ah. Three layers of the gold acrylic paint really did the trick, I think. So what I'm gonna do now, and I did run this under a hair dryer on cool so that I didn't melt any of the hot glue. Um, and now I have just this black ribbon. I don't have any gold ribbon anymore. I think I ran out. For this, I measured the length around my head plus a little bit to tie. I'm actually gonna take a lighter and I am going to use a flame to kind of stop the edges from fraying. There we go. All right, nice and flat. And then I'm going to fold this in half so that I can get an even amount of ribbon on both sides and cut where it folds. Slice. And of course, add a flame to the end of each of these to make sure they don't fray either. So I'm gonna kind of roll it and shove it through. And now I'm gonna fold it over on the edge. And I'm going to add a dot of hot glue here to keep it together, so don't. And this is the Gorilla Hot Glue, so this stuff goes straight up nowhere. Alrighty, not so bad. I was going to take the time to explain to you how to make a cloak, but I actually did it for a Halloween costume two years ago when I was the fairy godmother. I did a no-sew cloak. Obviously it was cropped, uh, so it only kind of came up to like my shoulder area, but all you would have to do is extend it to the length that you want it to make it the appropriate size, and that one did include a hood. So if you want to see a tutorial on how to make a cloak, so you can make one in green or black to kind of suit this costume, I would just check this link out right up here uh, and just make the cloak longer. Longer. It's that simple. I think they actually look kind of good. Now obviously my hair is a wreck and I wasn't expecting to be on camera today like face wise so I apologize for like that but you know it's pretty shiny. Obviously you can see over there but like Sylvie wears it like this so you can't really see the sides. It fits my head like perfectly. Obviously I measured it to my head but like this is so good. I love it. It looks so good. I can't wait to get this cloak on and do like a whole like thing tomorrow. <laughs>
Yay! I'm so happy. I hope you guys are too. Who's ready for the big reveal? Check it out! I mean, come on. It's not bad for five days, right? Not even four days. Um, I got sick yesterday, like really sick again. <coughs> Sorry. I feel horrible today. I'm not well. Uh, I was sick the last few days. It's actually Saturday that I'm filming this, getting all dressed up and all that. Um, and I don't feel great at all, but I had to get this last little clip in. Um, I got the cloak. Everything looks pretty great, actually. Um, it's definitely not a spot on recreation, but I think anyone who looks at me will be able to tell who I'm supposed to be, which is uh, really what I wanted. And I got to do a cool technique on the channel that I haven't done before. So I don't know. I feel like I look pretty good. The flow of the tape's really nice. I need to steam it a little bit. It's a little wrinkly. Uh, but I don't know. What do you think? I think it turned out pretty good. <laughs> I really am happy with the way that this turned out. I hope that you are too. I hope you got a little bit of inspiration and I do have the uh, template for the headpiece available on my Etsy shop. Uh, I'll try to put a link here. Sometimes it doesn't work. So if not, check the description box down below. I'll definitely link the cape that I have as well. Uh, and of course, link to the other cloak tutorial if you want to make your own. I know Halloween's coming up pretty fast, but uh, I do love doing something like this every year. Uh, Halloween's so fun. I love being able to DIY and make a costume. And especially when I'm able to do a lot of it myself. It feels very rewarding. So I am going to finish editing, editing this, get it uploaded, and I'm going to go rest because I am very sick. Um, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I do put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I would love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much, and I hope to see you then. Bye.